We're now all ready to do the last critical operation on the Arbor Support. I'd like to say thank you to a guy named Greg Menke, another member of the Nichols Club, I suppose. Way back in 2007, he made a post on his blog showing a little photo guide to him boring out an old Nichols Arbor Support. And the way he was doing it in his blog guide is pretty much how I'm doing it here, too. And here is where the accuracy of this part really is determined. The whole idea is that the Arbor Support now is exactly where it will be in as far as uh, it being clamped to the overarm and it being directly in the path of the mill spindle and the mill spindle ideally will take out any deviation in concentricity when it bores it. So let's get on with it and get this thing done. Over. Well, everybody, I hate to admit it, but I screwed up. When I was uh, boring the sleeve for the needle roller bearing, I bored it three thousandths over the size I was shooting for. I was going for it to be just a plain press fit, but at three thousandths over that, there's no uh, there's no press fitting that in. The way that I dealt with that though was. I put some Loctite on the roller bearing and inserted that in the sleeve and then mounted the Arbor support just like we have now. And I let that cure overnight. And I think that did it. But let's see what the test indicator thinks. This is a half thousandth reading test indicator. Well, I don't know if this is a good way, a valid way of testing the runout on the spindle, but it seems similar to uh, testing runout on a lathe. That's half a thousandth runout. I think we can live with that. Anyway now, let's stop crying and get to work. And what we have here is a piece of W1 tool steel that will be a 60 degree center that will come up against the center hole in the pilot of the arbor. It's kind of an old-fashioned thing to have a center in the uh, in the pilot of an arbor, but we're we're going all belt and suspenders here, so we'll have a thrust bearing and a 60-degree center. <laughs> Here we are, the final setup on any of these machines. We're going to drill for the taper pin, and then right next to that is uh, for this little grease fitting.
here's our part in the vise in a vise. And here's our taper pin reamer. Let's get this thing reamed. It's a chucking reamer, which and I would rather have it be a hand reamer because I can, you know, go slowly with it, but uh a chucking reamer is not going to sit well in a tap handle, so here we are. That should be plenty. You can tell I'm an amateur with the claw hammer. I think that's it. Okay, and the final, final thing we want to do before I declare this project complete is to heat and quench our 60 degree center. It's W1 tool steel, so I've got some water here to quench it in. I put it all back together and we're finally ready to take the first cut with this thing as a real horizontal mill. This cutter here is something that a guy named Larry uh, gave to me. Uh, I gave him one of the two uh, table nuts that I made in the very beginning. So thanks a lot Larry. Uh, I held on to these of course and we're finally going to get ready to uh, take some cuts with this thing. Let's see how it does 35,000 steps of cut. There we go. A little, uh, what is this? The beginning of a little quarter inch keyway, I guess, in this just drop off from the lathe, essentially. But there we go. I'm so happy about that. We've got our first chips with this machine as a real horizontal mill.
there's one thing that these mills are known for, and that's making money. So we're going to not waste any time and go right on to this mill's first uh, money-making job. This is for my day job here. I've got to make an extension for this European-style cylinder. I can't stand Euro cylinders. That's why I'm sitting down. So what we've got to do is make a 5 16 square, a quarter of an inch long, on the end of this. The collet block doesn't get a whole lot of use, so we're going to give it some attention today. I've got to take 110 thousandths off of all four sides. I'm going to go uh, 50 thousandths at a time. See how we did there. I started at a. Uh, I started at uh, 17 30 seconds, and I should be one ten away from my goal. And yes, I am. I'm at uh, 4:22. So when I take another 110 off of this side, we'll be right there on 5:16. Thanks to everybody for, for sticking around through this whole series. I know it's been long. It's been all summer. And um, I'm really happy with how it came out. This other Arbor support, uh, I made a mistake with it. So um, I'll finish that a little bit later. This might be a Nichols Arbor support or it might become a uh, NMTB Arbor support. In any case, thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.